making the transition from a novice lifter to an intermediate lifter. That's the topic of this video, how I'm doing it, what needed to change. Pretty much the last two months, I hit crazy plateau. I was stuck. Not only was I not making any progress for two months, I actually got weaker <laughs> in all my main lifts, right? So I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what the hell is going on that I can't, not only am I not hitting PRs, I can't even hit the PRs that I hit in the past. Um, so I did, I did that. I went back to the drawing board and I figured it out. And um, it was exactly that. I'm no longer a novice lifter, I'm an intermediate. And I need to train like that. So pretty much for four months straight, when I started doing barbell moves, uh, I, I was hitting a PR either every single workout or every single training block, like every single me like meso cycle, I was hitting a uh, I was hitting PRs. Whether it was one rep max, you know, two rep, three, five, eight, ten rep maxes, I was hitting PRs almost every single workout, and that's normal. That's that's normal for a novice lifter. Um, and then what happened is I pretty much maxed out on my noob gains, novice gains, uh, relatively quickly. I think the reason is because. Um, I, I've been training hard for, for years, just haven't really been programming very smart. That's been my downfall. So, now that I've been programming smart, I pretty much maxed out my new games relatively quickly. And then what happened was because I had gotten much stronger from my starting point, I'm still training like a novice, and I'm still trying to max out or hit a PR every single workout. What's happening? I'm destroying my recovery, my joints, my connective tissues getting inflamed. Uh, you know, I'm in pain, I'm getting injuries, getting sick, because I'm training too hard at these lifts that I'm now, now it's not like I'm, you know, I'm not squatting, you know, uh, 200 anymore. Uh, I'm getting up to have 300 and, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, you know, pressure on the joints when you start getting heavier with a lot of these lifts. It's pretty much things like that. So, what did I do to pretty much break through that plateau and hit all these PRs that you're seeing in these videos right here? I started adding assistance movements. So slightly smaller movements, uh, movements that I go a little bit lighter in to target weak points in my main lifts. Now my main lifts are, you know, squat bench deadlift, standing press, weighted pull-ups. What I had to do was I had to identify the weak points in all those lifts and start adding in smaller assistance moves to, to help uh, strengthen those weak points so that I can continue to make progress. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to be hitting a PR every single workout like, like when I was novice lifter, but at least every single meso cycle, you know, I add a few pounds here, a few pounds there. And uh, if you're doing that, you know, um, you know every single month, it, it adds up over the course of a year oh, and years to come. So, um, what assistance moves did I add to uh, help me break through this plateau? All right, so for squat, my assistance move that I did, so that's my primary move, squat, assistance move, front squat. Why? My quads are the weak point in my squat. And on top of that, it helps me to remain more upright when I do a front squat. So, that's why I added that. Bench, what's my weak point? My chest. So uh, what did I do? I started doing Larson press. So I, so I'm doing a bench press with no leg drop, and I you know I can go significant. I can go you know much lighter on that move, so it's less inflammation on my joints, um, you know less wear and tear, and it also targets a weak point. Deadlift. What's my weak point? Hamstrings. Hamstrings are just a weak point for me uh, overall. My back is very strong, um, so so I needed to you know add in. Um, Romanian deadlifts so I can you know really focus on that hip hinge and just strengthening my hamstrings and um, and my glutes um, press uh, press is actually not a, a really weak movement for me and compared to bench press my press is relatively stronger and I'm already doing a lot of pushing and pressing so I'm not doing any assistance move per se um, for press, um, I'm sort of just like as I, as my bench press gets stronger, um, you know, it's also helping my press get stronger. My press is still kind of moving along, 
So between bench press and press, if I have to choose one to focus on, because I can only, you know, put so much, uh, you know, mileage on my, my pushing muscles, my, my muscles that are involved in pushing, uh, you know, I got to ch- go with bench and get the bench up first. And the press is still going fine, so it's, it's a lower priority for me. Uh, weighted pull-ups. I'm really strong in weighted pull-ups. That's just what it is. Um, I, I don't really have a weak link in my weighted pull-ups. So, um, but I do, uh, I do have a weak link in my back and that, and that's that I pretty much have neglected my upper back for many years, um, to, you know, so my lats are very strong upper back can use some work. So I started adding in cable rows and I'm just focused on getting, uh, stronger in the horizontal cable row. So those are my assistance moves. Like I said, I had to identify these weak points. So I started adding in these assistance moves and it's really simple. I just added in three sets of five with a with a you know a weight that's a challenge and I'll work up to three sets of eight and then I increase the weight. It's written and then I go back to three sets of five. That's all I've done. That's the only thing I've done different um over the last couple training blocks, smash through all my plateaus. Right? So that that's pretty much it. You know, I, I have to start training like an intermediate lifter. On top of that I also have accessory moves. Right? So I have a primary move then I have assistance moves. That's to make my primary move better. Then I have accessory moves. These accessory moves are even smaller moves, and their main purpose is to build a size. So because if I can get the muscle to get to grow and get bigger, I'll also get stronger. Um, out of all the lifts, these are like sort of um, you know the lowest priority for me. So they're at the end of the workout, and you know if I don't have time that day or something, you know it's not going to be the end of the world if I if I happen to miss them. But these uh these accessory moves would be, uh you know incline curls, getting strong in these moves too. The same thing. Uh, all these moves that I'm doing, I'm not doing like really really high reps. I'm just trying to get strong, uh you know in the in the, anywhere from like the five to ten rep range with these moves. Incline curls, um tricep, uh for triceps cable cable push downs. Um, for shoulders, upright rows, um, kettlebell swings, um, as a, as a hip hinge movement, um, uh, um, leg curls, you know, on the machine. So, you know, this this is what I'm focusing on, and that's helped me build size. And uh, you know, I'm just eating a lot. You see, uh, you see, I'm 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 pretty big right now. I'm two o I'm two o three. That's the heaviest I've weighed in a long time. You know, uh, I think one. 92 is like a really comfortable walking around weight for me where I feel light and quick and um, still still relatively strong. But now, uh, you know, I'm just bulking up. I'm just trying to build a great strength base and I, I want to, you know, dedicate an entire year to being in a surplus and just, just getting as strong as I can. When, trust me, when I get lean again, it's going to be crazy because I'm going to have this, this strength, uh, strength base that I built, um, which is going to carry over into everything that I do. So it's, it's definitely been... Um, it's been going great. Uh, I'm actually really happy. But like I said, that's pretty much the main thing that I've done to change it. And uh, I think uh, another interesting thing is the way that I've split it up. So um, I'm, I'm day one is a lower body day. So I'm doing a lower upper split. Uh, day one, deadlifts and front squats. Now front squats are my assistance moves for squats. So why do I do it on my deadlift day, it's really simple because I want to squat twice a week and I want to do a hip hinge twice a week. Plus, it's still a lower body movement, so you know it's on my lower body day. But that way, I'm not just squatting one day a week. Get what I'm saying? So I'm getting more volume in. I'm targeting a weak point, and I'm also getting a higher frequency. That's that's really the key. So you know, deadlift, primary move, do my assistance move, front squat. Day two, upper body. Bench press, weighted chin ups, cable rows. Um, day uh, day three is uh, squats as my primary move, Romanian deadlifts as my assistance move, and then uh, you know maybe leg curls, maybe kettlebell swing, whatever I'm feeling. But but usually usually something like leg curls. Like I said, that way I'm squatting twice a week and I'm getting my hip hinge in. Um, day four, press is my main movement, and uh, then I might uh, then I'll do Larson press, and I'll also probably do 
uh, body weight pull ups, and that might be also the day that that I do uh, my curls and my press downs um, and my upright rows, things like that. Um, and like I said, so those accessory moves, I might mix and match them. It's, it's not completely strict, like, oh, I need to do these accessory moves this day. The primary moves and the assistance moves, that's got to stay the same for me uh, right now because it's, it's really the perfect split that it's, you know, it's allowing me to grow, it's allowing me to get stronger, and allowing me to also recover. Those are the key things. These accessory moves, like I said, um, you, know, you can mix and match. They're, they're smaller movements. The main goal with them is hypertrophy. Um, and, and like I said, it's the lowest priority. But that's how I've been mixing it up. That's how um, I'm adding extra volume into my workouts and um, giving myself time to recover as well. That's that's pretty much been the key, guys. Um, and uh, another uh, key that uh, that's that's been huge is also I'm doing back off work and I'm not grinding out any reps. So I'm always leaving reps in the tank now. Um, if, if I get stuck instead of pushing through, this is a great example on this one right here. Instead of pushing through, I could have had that one if I wanted. But, you know, instead of pushing through, I'll leave that rep in the tank. I'll take three minutes. I'll lower the weight, and I'll, and I'll get back after it. And I'm doing back off sets, getting that extra volume. In. So I could have ground out that rep right there, um, and, uh, and then I would have been done for the day. Instead, I leave something in the tank, take a few minutes to recover, drop the weight, get some more reps in. Drop the weight, get some more reps in. Um, that's been crucial. So not not pushing through, you know, trying to avoid hitting RP, RPE 10 reps and, and trying to just stay in that RPE, uh, you know, 8 to 9 range and just getting a lot more high quality volume in like that. So those have been the keys. That's been the difference that I made going from being a novice lifter to an intermediate lifter. I smashed through all my plateaus that I had over the last couple months, got stronger and everything. Uh, it really worked like that. And I'm just looking forward to continuing to training like this. And uh, like I said, do the bare minimum for gains. Doing the bare minimum for gains. Um, because why do, why do twice the work for an extra 5% results? Get what I'm trying to say? You're putting twice the effort to get how much extra results. I'm just a regular guy who's trying to get stronger, right? Um, I'm not competitive. I'm not looking for an edge on anybody. So I, I, for me, I think it's smart. I think it's a sustainable long-term approach to do the bare minimum for results, right? So, you know, I come in, I do five moves and I do those for four months and I make all the progress I can out of doing that. Once that comes to a screeching halt, I add in four or five more moves and, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to milking that for as long as I can. And um, I think I'll be able to do this for at least another six months to a year, right? And once I get to that advanced stage where I become an advanced lifter in all my lifts, that's when and I'll, I'll know it because I'll, cause I'll come to another screeching halt. That's just part of training. And when that time comes, I'll go back to the drawing board and I'll figure out what I got to do to go from intermediate to advance and from advance to elite. That's the game plan. Hope you enjoy the video. I'll talk to you next time.